Hello everyone, how is everyone doing? I would like to thank the replay viewers and everybody that is watching. My name is Tanika Drake and I am part of the World Changer Sister Tribe. First, giving honor to God to be here today. And I wanted to send a very, very special happy birthday to Dr. Princess Fumi Hancock. And I wanted to thank the King, the King Emmanuel Adebayo. Thank you, your majesty, for gracing us with your presence today. So what I'm here to do today is speak about my TV topic that will be on the World Change Your Sister Tribe group, which is their sister TV tribe handle, and it's called It Takes Courage to Leave. And what that is about is about domestic violence and abuse for all the different women, not just in the United States, but across the globe that have been affected by domestic violence. And it takes a lot of courage to leave those circumstances and situations. And because I know how that works, I would like to bring awareness to it. People see it. People know about it. People talk about it. Hello, Dr. K. How are you today, dear? So people talk about it, but they don't address it. It's a taboo type of subject. If you hear about it, you see it. Some people will notice it and they will not do anything about it. They won't speak about about it. They won't. Just, they just won't talk about it. So I, I wondered before why in the world I was going to be the one to take this kind of stance about it, make it be aware, um, bring awareness to it. Domestic violence is something that women go through, but they go through it in silence. And the one thing that keeps domestic violence, that keeps it going. Hello, how are you, Global Design? Pleasure to see you. Um, the thing that keeps it going is the silence. Silence keeps the domestic violence going and the abuse. Hello, back by his blood, this Tessa. How are you? Thank you. And all the different people coming in. Thank you so much. Heart it up, share. I hope to get to interact with you when you guys see me on Monday. So I wanted to talk just a little bit about the reason I wanted to do this show, first of all, because it has touched my life personally. I used to be the one that would say, girl, you should leave X and X and X. Girl, you deserve better than that. Why are you letting him do that to you? Do this, do that, do this. And I was the one steadily being here like the cheerleader, like get out of that, go on, go in. But when it hit me, when it graced my door, when it fell upon me, and I, I was like flabbergasted like, Hold up one second. Am I not the one that said to others before, leave? Am I not the one that said, go? But here I am. I'm that girl. I'm, I was that woman. I was the one that stayed because of the myths and the mindset and the things I kept telling myself. That God wants me to be with this man because it's covenant. Because I don't want to break the covenant. I don't want to break the covenant. You see, the rings here. Like, I can't break the covenant because God said, you marry, you stay. But God never in his word, did I go back and check the Bible and it said, till death do you get beaten to death. Till death do you get choked out to death. Till death do you must stay by being abused and being called all kinds of names that I did not grace to you. Till death do you stay being beat down. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So I'm here to actually bring awareness to the subtleties also about domestic violence. Because some people will say, oh, well, you know, you already knew what you were getting into when you got with that man, girl. You should already know. That is not true. That is not true. That is a myth. Some people, some people, I'm not saying everybody, but from my experience, that is not what happened. The person that I dated, the person that I knew, the person that showed himself to me was not what was I married. When I married the person, that person changed. It was like a facade. They changed. And I was like, whoa, if I had known, if I had known, do you think I would have signed up and married you? Absolutely not. But this is the, these are the types of things that I will be bringing awareness to. The different types of signs you can look out for because they're subtle. You're not going to know them. Did you change in any way? I did change. I did change. Uh, Mads, Mads Hunter, I did change. It broke me down. It broke my self-esteem down. So the person I came into, into this marriage, changed me. So I'm still having to rebuild my self-esteem. Still having to build myself up back up. 
So, and that's what it does. But the thing about domestic violence is it takes, it takes the aggressor, the abuser to study you. So people don't understand. They study you. When they come into your life, they study you. You may not know it, but they're studying. Just like prey, just like sharks study their prey. The aggressor and abuser is studying you. They want to get aligned with what you're aligned with so that they can get in there. And when they get in there, they got you. You're hooked. You're hooked like a fish on a hook. That's it. And by the time you're in, you're so far in, you don't know how to get out. And when you finally get your mind shift, right, when God actually opens up your eyes and says, look, 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 then you can actually finally see. You can see for real what's going on. You realize that God did not intend for you to be married that way. God wants marriage, the institution of marriage to be happy. So it is going to take you courage to leave because you're married to this person. You are a faith person, but you have to have the courage. So you have to go to the Bible and search the scriptures to find courage, courage to leave, strength to go, getting the strength from the Lord to leave that situation. It was hard. It took me eight long, long, long years to leave. And I'm yet still fighting. The rest of the battle is not done. See, the story is not over yet. So I still am, I'm still walking out this chapter. So right now I'm in the season of leaving. So the next chapter will begin later. So right now we are in the chapter of leaving. It's because you were following tradi exactly traditional rules of marriage. And also in the church. Some of the churches were teaching, till death do you part. You don't go out on your husband. You don't do this. You stay the good home wife. Stay, do your duty. Don't get a job. Of a but all of those traditional mindsets, those are the exact reasons that some women are hurt and some women are killed. And so I wanted to share a, a small story about a woman who did leave. Okay? Women stay home and I see. Yeah, women stay home and don't get jobs. And... You know, that's, that's unfortunate because they can do so much more. You understand? Tradition will, will always ruin. Will, will ruin, 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 ruin you if you stick to that. So I want to be mindful of my time. You guys are really engaging. This is great. So, <laughs> so I also wanted to talk about the story I was going to tell you about. was There was a woman who did leave. And I was living in Arizona. She left. And unbeknownst to her, the estranged called her. He had the kids. And he said, come on over. Come on over and see the kids. You know, I don't want to do nothing, nothing like that. And we'll just go out for a drive. So as I hear the story unfold, she gets in, not thinking nothing of it. She did leave. She did leave. She was no longer with the man getting ready to do divorce. The whole shebang. Do you not know that when she got into that car with her kids, he drove the entire car into the river and they all perished. All of them. Died. All of them. Kids. Wife husband. So she never did get her divorce. She never did get her divorce. She did leave, but she never did get her divorce. So till death do us part, they literally mean that. And hi, child of Most High King. And I remember the person who I'm still currently married to said to me, till death do us part. If you ever tried to leave me, I will kill you. And you think, you're thinking, oh, well, he loves me so much. No, he literally means that. So you can't just think that it's it's fake. Some people are like, oh, don't worry about it. It's just, you know, it's just some kind of thing that they say. No, every single threat they say, they mean. And I recall him also telling me when I was driving out here to get away, he says, you know, if I could find you, I would take my truck and ram you into the wall. You would ram me? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't worry. I'm just kidding. Same book you believed in. Got the situation. Yet the same book open your eyes. Exactly. So you cannot think that these different kinds of lies and myths are the same things that domestic violence is. Domestic violence comes in all shapes and sizes and forms. Some people do not hit. They're just verbal with it. Call you every name under the book. Every name they can think. And it's like, wow, well, he's not hitting me. Yes, but that's still domestic violence and still abuse. They said, well, he's not hitting me. He's just punching the wall. Okay, but 
that's still domestic violence. You just don't understand what they're doing. They're instilling fear in you, but you don't understand that. Exactly. Do not take those words lightly because they will be your death. You must listen to the signs and see them. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry your connection is bad. I hope you catch me on the replay. So please, if you do see me on my on my on my show, on the sister tribe show that has been graced to me, it is imperative that women, especially men go through it too, but women especially, because your kids need you and they can't be around you if you're in the grave. You cannot do anything for your kids. If they're in the grave, you are in the grave, they're in the grave, you can't do nothing. God cannot change you, use you, shape you, make you. He cannot do nothing if you allow that person to hurt you so bad that you end up dead before your time. You go see the king of glory before you're meant to be there. You understand? So I just wanted to bring awareness and understanding that your mother was a victim. And it's hard for me. OK, because I always think that this is not something I should be ashamed of. And it's not, you know, not what someone tells you. Exactly. And my show is going to be at. Let me see. Let me get my times right. 1130 to 12 Central Standard Time. I was going to give you guys a Pacific Standard Time. I get myself messed up so you can see me on Mondays at 1130. Is that right? I think so. 11.30 to, 10, to 12 stat CST. You know what? I'm going to have to go back and check that out because my, my mind gets messed up with the Central Standard Time, Eastern Standard I'm trying to keep all these times. So I apologize. You're like, she don't know what time she's going on. I do, just not right this second. So, <laughs> so give me grace, give me mercy. <laughs> if he hit you, why didn't you hit him back? And that has happened. Not saying that I sat there and it was a punching bag, but the whole thing of the whole entire situation is a cycle of repetitive abuse. You just you just have to see the signs of all of it while you're in it and all the different violence that goes from him to you, for you to him. It's all bad. All of it's bad from the name calling to the sexual abuse that's also part of it because they believe because you're married to them, they can just forcibly rape you. Like there's a whole myriad of things within domestic violence that people don't realize. And that's what I want to bring awareness to the very different subtleties and signs and different kinds of feelings you go through all the different kinds of stuff that I know myself I have gone through and if I've talked to other survivors that have come in where I've worked in different places. It's a lot. It's not just one thing. It says you should know better and move on. No, it's, it's, it's a lot more than that. You have the power of the P, make us and break us. You have the power to change any circumstance if you always change your mindset. So I stayed because of my mindset. My mindset kept me stuck. So now that I'm unstuck, I am so glad that Dr. Princess Fumi gave me this platform so that I can help other women to become unstuck as well because it gets stuck in well i shouldn't do this because of this and this is this and I, you know yes currently but we are working on that that's that's not going to be for eternity thank god so the first step is leaving the first step is leaving you have to leave first in order to change your circumstances so to wrap up everything you can find me on the sister tribe handle and the next beautiful person that we will be having coming up is Skin Miracles by Lady Nevea. She's going to be teaching us how to deal with our skin, keep ourselves looking fine as wine. And I'm so glad that this sister is going to tell me because I can definitely use some tips for myself. Definitely need some. So, yes, first tip, take that ring off. You know what? I should. Maybe I should pawn and get some money. What do y'all think? So we, we will definitely, definitely talk about that. So my time is winding up and I want to give Lady Nevea enough time to set up. So I thank you very much, all of you, for being here. Yes, ma'am. I, I hear you. I hear you, Sister Cynthia. <laughs> so I thank you very much. And I hope to see you guys all on Mondays. And you guys can find all the information you need on World Changer Sister Tribe. And I will go on my handles as well and put out the real time so everybody can look for me. So I thank you. Give it back for yourself. <laughs> Amen. I thank you so much. You guys be blessed and take care. 
and I hope to see you. Sister Lady Nevea is up next. Stay tuned. Go, do not go anywhere. Bye, everyone. You guys have a blessed day.